It was Tennessee and Kentucky, the final home game in Knoxville. The rains came, over 94,000 that came, and the volunteers came ready to play, building up a 17-0 lead in their first three possessions. It was a Tennessee victory in the Volunteers 7-3, winning 34-13, the key points of this football game from the coach's perspective. Well, John, uh, as you mentioned, it was a rather wet day, not slushy. Uh, I thought one of the fine football games that I've been around, uh, everybody contributed that I can see, uh, and every area certainly did. Uh, we had uh, excellent defense overall against the eyeball. The fullback quarterback thrilled us a few times. Uh, but excellent play defensively against a different type uh, offensive set. The kicking game again was very productive. Handling punts very well with Sean Summers, our freshman uh, uh, safety man. A punter punting very well. Tom Hutton, 72-yarder late in the game. And, of course, John Bexford continues with his outstanding play. And the offensive team was quite product productive as well. So it was an, a, a fine ball game. We, we took the attack to them early. We established uh, it was in charge and maintain our, our position as far as being a hit and had a decent, uh, if, uh, without saying a comfortable lead, I've never seen too many <laughs> comfortable leads until the last few minutes when we were able to play our really down the liners in the last few minutes. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I deeply appreciate the way the, the fans supported our football team and I also would like to say on a personal note, I am most appreciative of the sentiments and the many uh, uh, expressions to me personally, and the letters that have been received by Mary Lynn and me and my entire family, I appreciate that immensely. You'll never know how much I do. It's very touching. And most importantly, our football team won yesterday, which I'm sure pleased the many people who love Tennessee football. The Volunteers in Kentucky, it is, of course, a traditional battle. The two teams have played more against each other than any other rivalry. This is the 88th game, and we're set to begin it right now with the opening kickoff. And Kentucky wins the toss, elected to defer, so the Volunteers will receive. You can see it's wet, and you can see the fans are there with their orange ponchos, and you can see Tennessee's Ronald Davis returning it. And here to tell you about it as the Volunteers go on offense first down at the 21, at the 24-yard line, will be Coach Johnny Major. Well, John, one thing I'm very pleased about <clears throat> and proud of, I don't think I've ever had a football team in my entire career that overlooked Kentucky. I think any of us who ever played against Kentucky and have coached against them through the years realize the significance of this rivalry, even though we've dominated the last 16 years and dominated it historically. They're always hard-nosed. They come out of mostly high. There's Charlie uh, making some good running behind good blocking. A second look at the run by number 30, Charlie Garner, the junior college transfer with that cut. And though the field is wet, he is able to maintain his balance, and he comes dashing forward for a gain of 11 yards on the play. First down for Tennessee. Schuler. Very good timing. Excellent fake. Good timing on the throw. And the receiver catches the ball as it comes out of his cut. And so it will be. Tennessee trap with play. the ball. Big play up the middle. Mose Phillips. The trap play hit him three or five. About three times, I believe, for big gainers. Plus, I might mention Kentucky hit us on the trap play. That little full, full back was as quick as he could be. Of course, big Samuel, Samuels is big and strong, but Biasi. The small fullback is quick and fast and tough. This is Mose Phillips from Nashville, Tennessee. 37 yards on this run. Finally and rolled down. And speaking of Mose Phillips, he gives us outstanding versatility. He can play tailback. He can play fullback. He catches the ball. He can block. And he runs very effectively. He's a very valuable person to our football team and really came into his own as a freshman red shirt last year. It's first and 10 for Tennessee at the 12, and this is Charlie Garner ripping through the right side, knocked down by Moore's and, uh, Moore and Wells. It will be second down at the Kentucky four-yard line. Behind good blocking. Rodney Gordon at right tackle. And also uh, Jeff Smith at right guard. So Tennessee's got it third down and one. This is Schuler. Sneak play for a first down, the quarterback sneak. Keith Schuler, number 21, the quarterback. Here's the pitch, and this will be after a penalty. Tennessee pitching the ball to Garner, and he sweeps the right side and is knocked down at the four-yard line. It will be second down and goal. And here is Heath Schuler, and here is a touchdown, Big Orange. And very smartly uh, done. Good blocking and good faking, but also smart play by the quarterback. Watch him tuck the ball both hands, 
Watch his, watch his left hand cover the ball right there with a slick day, and plus in heavy traffic and goal line and short yardage, it's imperative that you tuck the ball and protect it at all costs. There's a good angle as Schuler has the ball cradled and Tennessee's got the lead six to nothing, and here's Bexport gunning for 29 in a row, and it's up and it's good. So Tennessee leads seven to nothing as the Volunteers march for the opening kickoff, then stop Kentucky. The Volunteers get the ball back. We pick it up at the Tennessee 43-yard line, first down and 10. This is Garner. Very quick. Good hold. That's over Bubba Miller, number 71. Tackle made by oh, Moore. It's a gain of five. Out of Nashville, Tennessee. And also Mike Storr. And our center. And here you'll see the strength of Charlie Garner carrying two tacklers with him for a gain of 11 yards. And it's first down at the 41. Back to throw Schuler looking for Ronald Davis. And it is complete. He's got him. Good play. Play action pass. The safety men played on defense rather aggressively against the run at times, and this uh, took advantage of that. Tennessee's been running well, of course, so that sets it up, and Schuler looks downfield, and coming across the middle, this will be Ronald Davis from Bartlett, Tennessee, and there you'll see the ball right in, cradled by Davis, who takes it down to the two-yard line. Jason Lehman is our center at the present time. Brian Spivey, an outstanding young man and fine player, is out, and he may, make, he may miss the Vanderbilt game as well. So. He was a valuable, valuable leader. There's Charlie Garner on the touchdown. His first of the year, surprisingly enough, as the pitch will go to Garner. He's got the lead blocker out. He's got the... Two uh, other good blocks, too. Todd in made the block on the corner, and the good blocks by the back. Big Todd there, number 97. Let's take another look from the end zone. There's the pitch. There's Garner. There's the blocking, and there's the six points for Tennessee. So Tennessee's Garner gives the, the Volunteers a 13-0 lead. And here to attempt the extra point is Bexport. It's up and good. And so in two possessions, Tennessee has marched downfield to score. And it will be the Volunteers stopping Kentucky yet another time. So we continue still in the first quarter, 14-0. That's Garner for two. He's quick. Very quick. Goes with determination. He has great, excellent running ability. And when he gets in traffic, he has good body angle. A good body angle. See the, the balance he has? He's running very low and spinning and turning and getting hit. is hard to knock down. 18 yards by Garner on that one. So at the 40-yard line, Tennessee's got it first down. Another trap play. Moe Phillips. He really picks his feet up. Nice block in there. Uh -oh. I think it's Kendrick Jones. Alert play by Jones. It's a slippery day. And let's uh, see that great run by Phillips says. Kendrick Jones makes the uh, block downfield, too. Then alertly recovers the fumble. Here you see Mose Phillips. Outstanding young talent, John. We still have a tough one ahead of us at Vanderbilt. But there's a sophomore redshirt Phillips. A sophomore downfield Kendrick Jones. Two freshman red shirts at guard. The hit jars the ball, but there alertly Kendrick Jones, who was a running back, and he cradles the ball, and Tennessee is stopped, and so on fourth down, as we go into the second quarter, Bexford is in for a field goal try from 32 yards that's up and good. Three possessions, Tennessee leads Kentucky by a score of 17 to nothing. The offense is clicking almost to perfection. Doing very well, plus with the defense uh, shutting Kentucky down, gives you a chance to get things into the groove. I was mentioning about an outstanding team, and it really, I think, has a great future. Um, going through some trials and errors this uh, present year, getting better to present time. We need to maintain that improvement to play against a much better Vanderbilt team than what we saw Saturday against Kentucky. No reflection against Kentucky. Uh, but uh, three freshman red shirts in the middle of the line, Captain Jason Lehman, and, and uh, just basically all youth, all freshman tight ends, and two junior, two sophomore kickers. Uh, they've got greatness ahead of them. And, of course, it will be Tennessee against Vanderbilt in Nashville on Saturday, and we'll talk more about the Commodores and the Volunteers, and we'll see more of the Tennessee and the Wildcats coming up in just a moment. Don't go away. The Johnny Baby Show will be right back. Don't go away. <laughs> 
one quarter, the Volunteers lead by a score of 17 to nothing as Tennessee has scored and it's three possessions to build the advantage. We're ready to go now in the second quarter of the football game and we pick it up with Kentucky. And there you'll see what is called the stacked eye, the power eye, whatever you call it, the eye bone perhaps. And it will be Kentucky with Pookie Jones back to throw. He's being chased and he's being sacked by Gallion and Richards. I believe we tied the Tennessee, University of Tennessee all-time sack record yesterday, I believe. For a season, that's correct. I think Shane had two of them, Shane Bonham. There's Jones. There you see Richards. There you see Gallion. And so the loss is seven yards, and it's going to be second down and 17. Tennessee leads 17 to nothing as, once again, it's Jones back to throw. You're getting pressure there, too, with tip the pass. That was Bonham coming from the left side defensively. Pookie Jones back to throw, and here comes Bonham, number 92, and the pass goes incomplete. Pookie Jones is a very good athlete, but we kept him contained rather well, except for a couple of option keepers. The long pass downfield is incomplete. Number seven, that's Parker back defending. After an exchange of punts, however, Kentucky has picked up the ball deep in Tennessee territory after a fine run by the number two quarterback, O'Farrell. This time, Riazzi carries, and he's knocked down by Sanders. That's There's true. a personal foul on the play, however. Got a good break there. That was a trap play that Riazzi hit. And again, he's very quick, and they hit us on the trap effectively three or four times. But it's difficult to stop everything every play, particularly against the Anibone team. Back to throw, O'Farrell looking, the pass downfield, complete. That's Browning who makes the catch. A 14-yard gain, and so it will be fourth down and goal, and Kentucky's going to go for it. Here's O'Farrell on the option, and it's a touchdown for the Wildcats. O'Farrell came in and gave him a different look and uh, gave him some spark, leading the team downfield for their touchdown. Jones was injured, and so O'Farrell is in there, and you can see the quarterback option well, keeping. That, that interior line play is rugged stuff. You've got to like football <laughs> a lot to be down underneath those piles and take on blockers and block. Here's Pelfi for the extra point that's up, and it is good. So Tennessee's lead is now 10 points. The Volunteers leading 17 to 7, and it will be Kentucky kicking off. And deep for Tennessee, this will be Davis. Excellent kick. Pelfi is outstanding. So Tennessee first down and 10 after the touchback of the 20, and this is Heath Schuler. Ball is a little slippery. Slightly underthrown, a little low. Second down, 10. Aaron Hayden, number 24, and a tailback for Tennessee. This is he to the left side. He's got about seven yards forward, Good and so blocking. Tennessee's got a third and three. Good blocking. Got some balance in our passing and running game. We've got the end block down right there. Good Pass. job. Complete, that's Davis. So Tennessee on third and three, picks up the first down, a gain of 13 yards. Schuler to Davis. Good delivery, good quickness, and uh, picking up some extra yards. Tell our receivers, you're an extenuation of the play. You try to make some extra yards because the play's been executed by 10 people up to the point when you catch the ball. It's up to you to try to get any extra uh, valuable yardage you can. The earlier pass was complete to the freshman, Nilo Sylvan, and here once again is Aaron Hayden, the sophomore, ripping through the left side for a gain of 17 yards. Another look as the Detroit sophomore. Rodney Gordon pulls up uh, inside and makes a uh, very good block from the linebacker to seal it off. And so after being penalized, actually, 25 yards on one play, here's the pass from Schuler to Stewart. He's looking Smith for running room. Block there. And there's James Stewart. A block downfield also. Still on his Two blocks. It's Stewart going all the way for a touchdown, Tennessee. With three, three key downfield blocks. Our two wide receivers, the other uh, elements in, the, in extending the play. And also you'll see Jeff Smith, the freshman red shirt of Meigs County, making the block on the corner out here. So back to throw on first down and 35 Roger to Smith, go. 74. Here you see James Stewart, a sophomore another from receiver. Morristown. There's another receiver on the ground making a block, both of which were key to the play going all the way rather than just making a sizable gain. And there the convoy by Kendrick Jones who catches up and uh, Tennessee leads by a score of 23, make that 24 to seven with the extra point up and good by John Bexford. Big, big play. Very big. Now Kentucky with O'Farrell at quarterback. On the option again, he's knocked down by Sanders, who led Tennessee defensively as far as statistics are concerned, a gain of five yards on the play. Again, I wouldn't call it a comfortable lead at the present time because there's too much left in the ball game, but a sizable lead. Intercept. Overthrown. Jason Parker. Smartly done by the freshman uh, safety man. He's a regular freshman, he's not a red shirt, and he also smartly runs out of bounds 
to conserve time when he realized he can't make a real big gain out of it after he intercepts it. And so there you see Parker making the interception. He had just a short amount of time prior to the, to the halftime. Two minutes. So this gave us a chance to at least get a field goal, possibly a touchdown. And here's the pass to Fleming, a left-hander. He's looking back to Schuler, and Schuler, who... That's a great catch. <laughs> a great catch. One-handed. I mean, make up, make up the first down. It's, I think, 35 or 36 in that situation. We called a timeout, made the play, and that gave us an opportunity to kick a field goal. Uh, with time running out, however, we had a, a very key penalty that knocked us back and knocked us out of a chance for three more points. So Tennessee leads by a score of 24 to 7. A very special day because fans brought food for the important cause. The Tim, the Tim Karen Memorial uh, Share Food uh, Bank. And it was in honor of an, an outstanding man, Tim Karen, who's the greatest trainer that that man could imagine having around. And, and probably the, the one most valuable person I've ever had with me uh, to work with in my entire coaching career. Severe loss to Tennessee and a severe loss to me personally and to as many of his fine friends, but this was a memorial to him, set up by people who thought it would be uh, a good thing to remember such a special man. And thanks to the fans for bringing all the food out for him. A special person for people who can benefit from it. So it will be Tennessee leading Kentucky by a score of 24 to 7 and half time. The second half and features coming up. So we invite you to stay tuned too. The Johnny Major Show. Children excited about learning isn't always easy, but at Beaumont Elementary, students see big results when they finish their assignments. What up, what up, what up? The big results that help to motivate these children are big orange football players. My class has participated in a pen pal project with the UT football squad since 1982 in the days of Fouad Reves and Willie Galt. Um, this is my 13th year teaching at Beaumont, and Sometimes it's difficult to find new and exciting ways to present the curriculum material to the children where they'll get excited and want to do it. But there was a little boy that wasn't very interested in writing a letter from the English book, and I told him he could write a letter to anybody he wanted to. And his most fam famous person in the world to him was Fouad Reves, and that's who he chose. So he wrote a letter to him, and that's kind of how it got started, and Fouad wrote back, and we've just been writing ever since. The students use information about the players in their geography, math, and even spelling lessons. But the Pen Pal program isn't limited to classroom lessons. Wide receiver Corey Fleming says there are a lot of positive things he tries to convey to the children. Mostly just the things that I grew up with, uh, you know, staying in school, um, staying away from drugs, um, doing the best you can in school, you know, making good grades and uh, respecting your parents and, you know, things of that nature. Um, you know, my mom and dad tried to instill those things in me when I was growing up and uh, being a role model to younger uh, kids, you know, boys and girls, I tried to do the same thing for them. The students are always excited to see their famous pen pals, and there's no doubt that the players enjoy the visit just as much as the children. <laughs> For the Johnny Major Show, I'm Connie Craig. Go 24 to 7, a very special and surprise halftime performance by the Pride of the Southland Band, saluting Dr. W.J. Julian, who is retiring after 32 years as director of bands at the University of Tennessee. Then back to football on a rainy day at Neyland Stadium. We pick up the action as Tennessee leads and will be kicking off. And here's Joey Chapman driving it downfield. And this will be Hicks returning the ball. And he brings it up to the Kentucky just about the 22-23 yard line. Shoved out of bounds by Summers. And so with Kentucky in possession, here again, Coach Johnny Major. And here... The counter is play. <laughs> There's that quick fullback, Riazzi, right? Riazzi, who in the ball game carried nine times for 109 yards. This one good for 51 yards on the first play. O'Farrell, well, the quarterback. Get your attention. If you're a little bit <laughs> pleased about your lead at this present time, that realize right, you realize right away it's not too comforting. 
there and it gets the attention of Tennessee's Jenkins with the interception. Another good young athlete, Jenkins and Parker, Red Group freshman, starting in our secondary. By the way, I certainly have enjoyed my association with Dr. J. Julian. Considered him a friend. We've had some pleasant times together. There's and also the interception. He's been certainly a highly capable, competent person in his special profession of music. The return by Jenkins of the interception stops the drive and tells he's got the football, as you see now, third and fourth at 21 pitch to Garner. And here he goes. Running. Cut back all the way against the green. The play was designed on the right side of the line. He cuts it all the way outside the left side. And that's what you call running to daylight. You're running toward the line of scrimmage, but keeping your eyes open, not cutting unless something's there. Run for the opening. A 16-yard gain. We move along. Mm -hmm. Tennessee third and three at the Cat 43-yard line, and this will be Schuler on Big the game. option keep. Good effort downfield by Craig Faulkner. It's a 24-yard run on the option by Schuler. Craig and I have a little something going. I, I asked him one time. We played Kentucky last year. I believe it was in that week of practices. Greg, you got your gut pills with you this week. You got to <laughs> have what it takes to face Kentucky. And he asked me in pregame warm-ups after this. He says, Coach. You got your gut pills ready today? I said, yep. He said, he said I'm ready, because he's from uh, Richmond, he's Kentucky. Richmond, Kentucky. Exactly. And so Tennessee's got a first down, and here at tailback, this is James Stewart, who earlier scored on a 60-yard pass and run a gain of two. It will be second and eight at the 17. Stewart again, battled by Robinson, four-yard gain. So on third and fourth to 13, Tennessee leading by a score of 24 to seven. This will be Schuler looking to throw. The pass is incomplete. The main thing, he got rid of the ball and didn't take the loss. And so Tennessee can get Bexford in for the field goal. That's up and good. He's 16 for 19 field goals. 60 F extra points in a row during his two-year career. And Tennessee leads 27 to 7. And, and the here's the, the kickoff. The lead is getting better, close to being comfortable, but still. That one point difference, you know, four seven to 28, they score three more touchdowns and three extra points. We have a 27 to seven lead. You'd like to get those next three points to put you at 31, naturally. Kentucky takes the kickoff. Good there is pursuit. a penalty for holding, and so it's first and 10 of the six, pursuit. and this is O'Farrell knocked down by Richards with Surlis. No game. You'll see a second look right here, there's 94. Coming up. There's Surlis. And there's other help there, Ben Talley, and then J.J. McCleskey is up for aid in case he's needed. McCleskey, one of the co-captains, along with Todd Kelly. Two outstanding captains. Two fine co-often captains, too, and Solis and also Mike Storr. We have two captains and two alternate captains. O'Farrell fumbles, Branham recovers. Here's Riazzi again. A counterplay, very quick. 11-yard gain, another look. As it was first and 10 at the Tennessee 20 as Kentucky has marched downfield with the football. That's a misdirection play. You start to play in one direction, get it come, coming back against the grain to slow down pursuit. So at the nine, here's Riazzi changed that O'Farrell, keeping the ball running over the right side for eight yards, and it's, for, it's second down and goal at the Tennessee one. I don't believe he scored. Well, the official said he did, so it will be a touchdown. And pretty far downfield to override, too. It's really, I don't remember <laughs> anybody ever being overridden when they had a striped shirt. But the extra point the extra try point. is blocked by Jenkins. And that's a big point block right there. That puts it back to two touchdowns and two extra points spread uh, that they have to catch up and go for two if they're going to beat us and have to make the two points and win the extra point tries. Here's Ronald Davis. What a block thrown yeah. right there. Very good block. Excellent. Intimidating block. And so Ronald Davis, after the Kentucky touchdown, cuts it down to 27 to 13. What's Victor Brown now. I think he'll come to the picture about right there. there. Get to number 30. <laughs> Victor Brown making the block, and it will be open the path, and Davis returns that one 41 yards. And so Tennessee's got the ball. First down and 10, leading 27 to 13 at the Tennessee 42 yard line. Here's Charlie Garner. Breaking outside the contain. But that was good running on the kickoff by, by Davis. You know, that doesn't happen too often, but it's probably good occasionally to keep people to cover the field so they don't uh, converge on you all in one mass of humanity. Garner carries. It's a first down out to the Kentucky 48-yard line. Tennessee leads 27 to 13. Moses Phillips picking his feet up. The side behind some softness created in the, in the middle of our offensive line. Johnson tackles for the Cats. The pitch, Garner, the it worked, corner. It, it worked well. Amazing. That's a busted plate. 
Shooter turns the wrong way, but when he did it, I think it slowed the pursuit of the linebackers down. We don't want to make that a practice, but <laughs> that's the way that some plays have been developed, you know. See the reaction of the defense? Well, heck, let's put that in. <laughs> so that was Garner carrying that time for three yards. And here's Garner again. Following the blocking, moves downfield for the ball game. 21 carries, 138 yards as the third quarter comes to a close, but will continue as Tennessee is marching against the Wildcats, now moving toward the south end. It's first and 10 at the Cat 21-yard line. It's just a power play. Fullback leading up in there behind Phillips, and also the left guard, Miller, pulling up uh, over the right guard area as well. So we have two lead blockers in on the power play. Charlie Garner there. Charlie Garner on the pitch here circles the left side, and Tennessee will have it third down and two at the Kentucky 13-yard line. Moses Phillips got a real uh, real dose of fullback yesterday because Brunson was out of the game. Quarterback keeper on the option, fine blocking, clear hole, shooter it turns it up toward the goal line for a touchdown. So another look as Heath Schuler on this run will break a Tennessee scoring record for a quarterback rushing. This is the 11th touchdown of the year, and that's a new record breaking the one held by Jimmy Streeter. And here's the extra point by Bexport. It's up and good. And so just a few plays into the fourth quarter, Tennessee leads now by a score of 34 to 13. Two outstanding talented young men uh, from in the same neck of the woods across the hills of North Carolina, Jimmy Streeter and uh, and he's shooter and shooter is is a fabulous talent he's a fine young man too he's very unspoiled uh, likes to play good team man but he is a great talent that has uh, uh, an unlimited future so Tennessee leads kentucky the fourth quarter still to come and we'll be seeing it with you right here on the johnny major show the school record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback with a total of 11 now for the season, better than Jimmy Streeter's mark set in 1978. So there you see Bud Ford with the stat that we'd already mentioned. I hated to step on his toes there. I really didn't know what he was going to talk about. Hey, you can't step on to Bud's toes very much. Bud says it like it is. If anybody I've ever seen, Bud Ford uh, is one of the most efficient thorough people I've ever known in my life, and he doesn't beat around the bush. It tells you what he <laughs> thinks about you or anything else, and he is a loyal University of Tennessee person through and through. He is good. Our press guides that he and Haywood Harris have put out through the years have won a tremendous amount of awards. So well, I've had great support from those two people. They're wonderful. And University of Tennessee is very fortunate to have two fine people like that. And we're happy to have Bud with his stat each week because uh, some of them are actually correct. We're now ready to go into the fourth quarter of the football game, and it's Tennessee leading by a score of You won't hear the last of that. <laughs> Bud, will Bud, Ford, Bud Ford will come back. Back to throw. This is Hockman. Pass downfield is incomplete. I want to mention Jimmy Struther. I had a call from Jimmy last week, and Jimmy's had some difficulties physically, and um, great to hear from Jimmy. O'Farrell. Oh, Back to throw, looking downfield. This pass is intercepted. That's Parker again. Good block a little J.J. Big J.J. He's got a big heart. J.J. McCleskey. It was Parker, his Parker. second interception in this game, his fourth for the year. Ball slightly overthrown, but he's the right place where a three-deep safety man should be. He's playing in the middle of the field. J.J. makes a pop, knocks the uh, receiver down, hold on to it. Good athlete, picks it back up. Now we move along as Kentucky's back on offense, and Hockman, number uh, 19, is the quarterback. Tennessee leads by a score of 34 to 13. Two interceptions by Parker, I believe, and also one fumble recovery, right? That's correct. I got to have that one. Good play, you're in good shape. Tennessee Down using a lot of people defensively now, Coach Majors. You mentioned earlier that uh, you got a chance to get a lot of people in this football game. Yeah, Sessions is in the game now. We have uh, Let's see what's on pick out out there. This will be Steve White, another freshman red shirt in the defensive end. Corey Stone, I believe, is in there tackled. That's correct. Ed Kask is in there tackled. Steve White, number 64, running with Ben Kelly as a starter. He's in there. Pick up the fumble. That's Parker on the recovery after Riazzi had picked up a 15 yard gain. <laughs> Tennessee with Hutton to punt. Standing as, as you see at his two yarder. This a record setter for Hutton going downfield, and you can see it's beautifully done. 
72 yards, Tom Hutton, who had a great punt last week at yeah, Memphis. That's, that's a great punt. He's really, he's really getting better and better and better. He's kicked the best he's ever kicked the last part of the season. That's just maturity and growing up because he has, Tom has a great head on him. He's smart. And he also has a fine leg and is becoming more confident all the time. But Riazzi hasn't quit yet, has he? He's still hanging tough. <laughs> and a well over 100 yards in the football game. And Tennessee shows, uh, first you saw Frost. Here is Bennett, a senior, one of 18 for Tennessee, making the tackle. Hockman. Horace Marsh putting pressure on him, and I guess... Uh, Bonham was there, Bonham I believe. The they called the quarterback down before he released the football. Now Tockman again There's being Horace pressured Marsh. by Horace Marsh. Pressure on him. Good, good effort, Horace. Good up again. This is Bonham. Bonham's going to get him. Good tackle. Both hands around him. Here right to the, the pulley bone. Third. Third down and 35. As you'll see, Tennessee chasing, and there's Shane Bonham. He's a junior. And so it will be Kentucky as Hockman is back to throw. Looking, throwing, and this one is intercepted. Uh, David uh, Bennett. Excellent. David Bennett is in perfect condition. Broke on the ball. Perfect his, situation. His first interception this year, but he's had one every year. And this his senior season as the volunteers. I hope he'll take a second look at the play by the senior from Germantown. Well, that's the play that they had the best effect, best success with, I should say, on their passing game. And they threw about three key ones to, to, to establish a drive and make third down plays. David, David since that did a great job. So the Volunteers win by a score of 34 to 13 and we'll be visiting with the victorious Volunteers as you see Coach Johnny Majors on the shoulders of some big offensive linemen and others being taken to the dressing room and that's where you'll be in just a minute to visit I with the Volunteers. I felt like I was in good hands with that group. That's a special group there, I'll tell you. <laughs> Gardner. Chili, how do you think you did today? Um, I think I came out and played well. You know, my family was in town, a couple of other um, members of my family, other, other than my mother and father, so, you know, I had to perform for them as well and score me a touchdown here. Um, I felt great coming into the game. Um, I had more confidence coming off that Memphis State game, so that just, um, it's been rolling for me, and um, I came out today prepared, ready to play. Talk about what kind of offensive game it was for you. Uh, basically, it was just a, you know, just shove it down their throat offensive game. Uh, you know, we wanted to go out and control the ball uh, and be able to you know do what we had to do to get it done and uh, luckily we were uh, you know we were just able to go out there and just you know just take it to them and uh, you know that the rain we want to put the ball in the air too much and uh, good thing we didn't have to we had a few things going our way throughout the whole game you know we had some good drives so it pretty much went the way that we wanted it to go we were just trying to keep their offense off the field talk about what kind of game it was defensively well kentucky came out and played very well and uh we had a lot of guys flying to the ball a lot of guys playing uh like a tennessee uh, football team is supposed to play uh, we had uh, jason parker and ron jenkins in the secondary uh playing better than what uh, you can imagine a freshman to play jason parker uh two interceptions and two fumble recoveries did you have their playbook or what no i guess i was having to be in the right place at the right time today you all but shut down the uh the passing game talk about uh, uh how you did there uh, you know, I'm passing him. We got some pressure on Pookie up front and those other quarterbacks, too. I think they were trying to switch us up to confuse us a little bit with those other guys because we hadn't seen them a whole lot. I think they were kind of scrambling to try to do anything to just try to get something working for them. Uh, but we had pressure on We got some great pass rushes and put a lot of pressure on them. I think the linebackers were making a lot of tackles because uh, I know that they were double teaming the down linemen a lot. And, uh, you know, I think that the defense played pretty well overall, and uh, I'm happy with the win. I mean, last home game this season, but more importantly, last home game for Coach Majors. Talk about what that means to you and the team. Well, it was definitely an emotional uh, game going in. The seniors, uh, I'm sure they wanted to play as hard as they did, and, and which I know they did. They, they give 110% effort, and we want this to be memorable for Coach Majors. I mean, this is his last home game, so let's go out and play. Give it all the effort that we have uh, within us, and uh, don't leave anything in the locker room. Definitely leave it on the field. It, it means, you know, uh, a lot. We've been here for five years. Uh, we've been through a lot with him. He's, you know, he's done a great job, and he's, you know, he's, he's helped a lot of players out and uh, you know it's it's probably I guess just the best way of saying thank you for uh, all, all the things that he's done and, and all the things he's done for Tennessee football. Well definitely it was an emotional game uh, last uh, game for me last game for Coach Majors and the seniors and uh, it's just so wonderful that we could come out on a positive note and uh, play well as a team and then play well enough to uh, you know get a bowl uh, 
being it. It's been real fun playing here in front of such a big crowds. It can start off kind of scaring me, but now you know I felt like this is my home coming down here and playing on the field and just being real relaxed even in front of all these people in huge crowds. I'll miss it, I'm sure, uh, next week, and uh, I'm sure it'll probably really hit me next year when I come watch a game and see all these guys down here, my friends playing down here. I'll tell you what, I couldn't have had it much better uh, as a senior, and uh, I'm just thankful uh, for everything that, that I've been blessed with this year, and uh, it's meant a whole lot to me, and I'll, I'll carry it with me the rest of my life. So once again, the beer barrel will remain in Knoxville as the seniors go out in style, beating the Wildcats 34-13. to We'll be right back with more of the Johnny Major Show right after this. The game. After two consecutive penalties that are back-to-back -back on the same play, uh, we uh, had an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty along with a holding penalty, and this was a screen pass, and described it earlier, <clears throat> shooter goes back to set the pocket like it's a regular pass, and then you see the lineman set, go to the right like uh, Smith there. Stewart has good hands. It also takes good downfield blocking by your wide receivers to spring it for a touchdown and give the back a chance to run for more daylight rather than just getting a long game. I asked the official on our side, I said, ask the referee what this unsportsmanlike conduct was about. He says, he said he didn't curse him. He said it was the way he said it. He, the player said he questioned the call. I said, I'd like to know because if I get another job, I'd like to put that on my checklist. <laughs> we'll be talking more with the coach Johnny Major coming up in just a moment. to finally play ball games, I mentioned at the opening of the telecast. You know, that group of seniors, are, they're very special. 18 of them, and about four of them have earned scholarships since they've been here. They won 36 games, nine, lost nine, and tied two. 36, nine, and two for an average uh, winning record each year of nine and two, and an overall record of 78%. I'd say that uh, a lot of folks can uh, can do okay in this business with that type record and I commend them and I congratulate them and I'm very proud of them. One of the blessings I count with Thanksgiving coming up. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt will be a much better football team in all respect to Kentucky and a much better team running a similar offense but uh, Coach Donardo there was at Colorado when they ran this very effectively and they look good against Kentucky. They're getting better and uh, they'll always be better against us. So it'll be Tennessee and Vanderbilt. We'll see you here next week. The Johnny Major